it's now time to pay attention towards our health issues. The tips for this health and nutrition segment will be provided to us here on the set by Dr. Lalita Gaul. Dr. Gaul is an author as well as a teaching professor at College of Medicine, Howard University. The moderator on this set is our own Dr. Shampu Banik. The topic in discussion today will be cholesterol and heart disease. Let's take a look. Good morning. Welcome to Global Television Network's Women and World Views Health and Nutrition segment. This morning, we are delighted to have with us one of the internationally known experts in the field of cholesterol and heart disease who has written many books on hearty health and diet, Professor Lolita Call. Professor Call, welcome to our studio to talk about cholesterol and heart disease this morning. It's a pleasure. Tell me, what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a fatty, <coughs> waxy substance. It's not all bad because everybody mm -hmm. says, oh, cholesterol. We naturally, even a newborn baby is born with some cholesterol. It has, it has good um, qualities. It's part of our mm -hmm. natural arteries, part of uh, precursor for testosterone. It is good for um, like the yolk in the egg is phospholipids. And it is good. It's only when it, uh, as we get developed, as I said, newborn mm -hmm. child also you'll find, and which is healthy. As we get older and some conditions make, mm -hmm. make it go higher, which can affect the heart. And so it is happening more so, it may be because we have more technology and we can measure it. And there are so many fractions. And so to prevent heart disease, heart mm -hmm. attack, and even in the diabetics, even mm -hmm. if your uh, uh, sugar is normal, any doctor will send you for the lipid profile mm -hmm. because diabetes first affects the cardiovascular system. So it has good qualities, but we want to keep it under control. And the numbers by the American Heart Association have been going lower and lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First it was 200 and above milligrams per deciliter. Now it's saying below 200. Mm -hmm. But the newest guidelines few months ago was saying, even if you have one risk factor, mm -hmm. family history mm -hmm. or heart disease, your cholesterol should go way down uh, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. that. So, so cholesterol and heart disease are related? It's not related. Cholesterol is a risk factor. Risk In factor. heart disease, mm -hmm. there are several risk factors. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol is one of them. Okay. Before we knew only cholesterol, if you want, I can talk to you other fractions which are important. Okay. We, when we, your physician orders tests, he looks at the whole lipid panel. Lipid panel. Yeah, okay. and then he will, he or she will decide either to put you on medication mm -hmm. or lifestyle change is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So it is the cholesterol get so full in the arteries and also it's not only cholesterol it's calcium it's other things and we Indian American population our arteries are very narrow mm -hmm. if it keeps on building up it can uh, cause heart attack now you talked about bad cholesterol and good cholesterol what are the difference between the good and bad and how one gets bad cholesterol one get good cholesterol well, first we have the total mm -hmm. cholesterol, which said is recommended less than 200. Mm -hmm. Then we have good cholesterol, which, which is called HDL, mm -hmm. high density lipoprotein. HDL. HDL. Okay, okay, yeah. It is a good, but we Indian Americans have very low HDL, mm. which is a big risk factor. I have patients coming like it should be above 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. 
and I have patient, Indian patients coming who have 28, who have 30. Hmm. And lifestyle changes, which I can talk during the course. So that is a good. Then another bad fraction is low density lipoprotein, which is really the culprit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it is above 120, and the new guidelines from American Heart Association is it should be 100. 100. I mm -hmm. had to change my slides for the students to show 100. And if you have even one risk factor, it mm -hmm. should be 70. Can you imagine to bring it to 70? And then we have triglycerides, mm -hmm. their uh, type of uh, fat like it has three glycerols. I don't want to go into biochemistry of okay. it. Triglycerides tend to be high in Indian American population. Why? It is, it is a killer. Low HDL, high mm. LDL, high oh. uh, triglycerides. Why? Uh, it's a combination of factors. Yeah. If you are eating too much uh, sweets, sugars, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if your alcohol consumption is high, yeah. you are overweight and your activity is low. And people, new study has come. Mm -hmm. Usually people with pot belly and big belly are mm -hmm. more prone to have high triglyceride diabetes. So mm -hmm. if a patient has low HDL, mm -hmm. high LDL, mm -hmm. high triglyceride, you have either by medication or combination, you are walking on a ticking bomb. And uh, so there are various things available and we Indian Americans mm -hmm. are more prone because our arteries are also very narrow. So we have to do it from the very beginning, something about it. Please shed some light because as you have so eloquently articulated that Indian Americans are prone to have high cholesterol and associated blood yeah and well, sugar as well as heart disease so what they can do to prevent all this right. now some i get sub consult some say well i'm vegetarian why do i have hmm. high cholesterol now if you look at vegetarian diet yeah. they're taking saturated fats more whether oh. it's in cookies or crackers mm -hmm. you know, palm oil and all this so it's not only the meat which is giving you cholesterol so i have to look at their diet and say mm -hmm. It's too much high in cookies, crackers, and all that. Yeah. How do we modify? You can stay vegetarian. I don't want to change it. So the diet, I think there is saturated fat, uh -huh. which you get from butter and um, uh, meat. So first thing is change your oil. Mm -hmm. uh, olive oil is the best. It's monounsaturated. Mm -hmm. The difference between mono and polyunsaturated is in monounsaturated, there is only one double bond. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to throw so much chemistry there. Mm, quick, Our quick, fats quick. have hydrogens and carbons, they're in a chain. And if you have one double bond, that is mono, and mm -hmm. if you have several bonds, mm -hmm. it's poly. So we want monounsaturated, which is your virgin. Take mm -hmm. extra virgin olive oil because it has not processed, or you can take peanut oil or other oils. No. Now they are making butter also from this. Mm -hmm. That's the method of cooking and cutting down on fried food and exercise is very important, especially if the triglycerides are high. And again, you don't have to do marathon. You can do starting with 10, 15 minutes and increasing and the sugar and alcohol. Triglyceride is very tied to sugar and alcohol and your HDL is with exercise. Mm -hmm. I had my own HDL, you know, to give my own secret, I used, was not much sports minded. And when I mm. saw my HDL was 30, I said, oh. And I started mm. exercise, not marathon. Now my <laughs> HDL is 60. So I'm oh. the living example of high HDL, low LDL, bah. but I did with lifestyle modifications. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the fish, mm -hmm. again, if you don't eat, you don't have to eat, but fish has high omega fatty acids. Mm -hmm. There are omega-3 and omega-6, and we want omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-6 is more from vegetables. What is happening in our diet, we have higher omega-6. Mm -hmm. The ratio is, and that's causing problem. Now, 
fish, uh, not the big fish, but uh, the fatty fish, mm -hmm. sardine and this, um, what is this, salmon, Some tuna, mm -hmm. you can, uh, the fish is two times a big fish. And I have in some other segment, I can talk about how do you cook without frying and making it tasty. So if you control these four factors, and if you divide total cholesterol by your HDL, you can get ratio. And if the ratio is higher than five, then your risk factor is high. But we want to keep it around ratio three. And there are other factors in heart disease called homocysteine and mm -hmm. C-protein reactive. I won't get into it. And um, so these are lifestyle changes. You don't have to do one, all at one time. You can take one step at a time and in consultation with your physician who may decide to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, put you medication or not put you medication. <coughs> Dr. Cole, you talked about fish, eating fish. Now, Indians are well known for making fish curry yes. with lots of oil. Yes. Now, if they eat fish with lots of oil in that, you know, then really it defeats the purpose. Uh, how about I have an answer. Boiled, yeah. I have an answer. <laughs> That's how I make. What you do is mm -hmm. fish, you can put all the masalas you want, mm -hmm. and different cultures we put different things. Then use a spray, olive oil, you can get spray, oh. Oh, then okay. bake it. Mm -hmm. You like it, cr the idea is we want it crisp and then make it in curry. Bake it mm -hmm. to the point you want crisp, then make your masala. Just put one teaspoon of olive oil, okay. put masala, you put this, mm -hmm. and the calories will be half and your HDL will go high. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. it comes very tasty. I try all these things before Good. I tell anybody. Well, in our next segments, we'll be talking about your recipes. Yes. Now, let me ask you about the ghee. As you know, Indian Americans prefer ghee. Yes. The, what's the difference between butter and ghee? Basic, you know, both of them are saturated oils, mm -hmm. which as I told you, they have so many double bonds. And they tend to... Uh, stay in the arteries mm -hmm. unless your genetic makeup is that it doesn't so ghee is more saturated even though it's clarified butter mm -hmm. I have had guests when I cooked in oil they said they didn't enjoy because they were used to cooking in ghee <laughs> so I tell these patients to keep the taste you can eat it occasionally mm -hmm. if you are making a pilau you want mm -hmm. ghee in it or if you are uh, making some special dish. So you have your ghee, but cook in unsaturated oil. Mm -hmm. Cook it. If, uh, and do not fry. Use alternate methods, mm -hmm. which hopefully in some other segments I can talk about. Portion size, okay, and yeah, cooking methods, mm -hmm. which are very, very important. Okay. Now that we are coming to the end of this segment, in 30 seconds, Tell our viewers what they must do to reduce the incidence of high cholesterol and heart disease. Um, in okay. 30 seconds. Yes, lifestyle changes, diet, which is low in saturated fat, exercise according to your lifestyle, mm -hmm. and if you are the person who can meditate, do yoga, other things, and enjoying your life whether it's family, friends, have a healthy attitude, the combination of this recipe is to your heart. Well, thank you very much for enlightening us this morning with regard to one of the most important topic, cholesterol and heart disease. Again, thank you, <laughs> Professor Call, for coming and sharing your long experiences with us. Pleasure to be here.